The title of this video might just be a little tiny bit clickbait, but I can explain. Whilst I would love to do so, it isn't entirely viable for me to show you every single interaction between every single troop in order to show you every single optimal placement in the game. I'm sure that'd be a very informative video, but I don't even think I would want to upload it. I like to believe you guys out there have a few brain cells to share, and such I'd rather introduce you to the general concept of placement and allow you to learn the theory behind them, rather than just show you what to do and have you guys copy. Anyway, with all of that said, if you do happen to enjoy today's video, then do be sure to drop a subscription onto the channel, it helps me out a bunch with producing these guides for sure. Anyway boys, let's get into it. Just to preface this list, I must say that there are going to be four categories of cards that we discuss. Firstly, we'll go through how you place your melee units. These are things that state melee on their card screen. However, as to every rule, there are exceptions, but we'll get onto those later. The first melee placement is pretty basic, and this comes in the form of defending oncoming melee units. Place yours down as central as possible in order for the other melee unit to spend time walking on your side. In this extra time, your crown tower is sniping it down making the battle easier for your melee unit in the center. The only real exception to this is against Royal Ghost, where you should just plant on top of him. This is because he's not visible to the crown tower anyway, so you may as well engage him as soon as possible. Against ranged units, this is also the placement you want to take up. Putting your melee unit in the middle means that the ranged unit can hit your troop before you can hit theirs. Placing them right on top starts the battle at an even length, allowing your melee unit to come out on top. When using a melee unit to defend either a bandit, mega knight, or fisherman, you also want to use this ranged placement right on top of them. Placing on top of these means that these units cannot get off their dashes or hooks, which is more efficient for you when defending against them. Against building targeters, you want to make sure your placement is in their pathway, but is also on top of them. If a hog is distracted by an elixir collector, you don't want to miss it by placing centrally or behind the hog. If there's no building, then a central plant works anyway. To end off this melee section, I should probably add a note about Goblin Gang, Giant Skeleton, and Hunter. Goblin Gang's placement should be considered melee most of the time. Giant Skeleton's placement should always focus on obtaining the most value from the bomb, so you rarely want central placements. Hunter is probably the weirdest one to place. He's a ranged unit with higher melee damage. Against melee units, place in the center, and against ranged units, place right on top. Apart from that, melee units are quite simple, you just have to learn to central kite and when not to. Range units are even easier than melee to grasp. The optimal placement here is just centrally. That goes against melee units, range units, and building targeters. Using the range advantage here allows you to kite melee units while staying clear of other ranged units or building targeters. If your opponent has a larger push with a building targeter, you might just want to place your range unit behind your tower. This will offer it some protection from supporting units. However, this can be worse if your opponent has a damage foe in hand, so use this placement situationally. The only time I can think of placing a range unit centrally would be with a splash and tornado combo. You want your executioner and whatnot to be hitting head on so it doesn't miss units, meaning it would need to be placed dead in the center of the lane. Buildings also come under this range section. Most of them you should be placing in the center of the arena in order to kite all units. The only exception to this is Goblin Cage and Elixir Collector. Goblin Cage can sometimes be placed on top of units when necessary, and Elixir Collector should always be guarded by a tower. Buildings could be an entire category of their own, but instead I recommend my hugely in-depth video all about them in the top right corner now. Another card you should regard as a range unit are the Rascals. Whilst they do of course feature a melee unit, their main DPS comes from the range and such they should be placed in this manner. Bandit is a melee unit you should also place in the range unit fashion. Her dash allows her extra damage if you place her in the center, so in my opinion she is ranged. Now on to win conditions. To understand the placement of win conditions, I once again must recommend a guide on them I did a while back. It explains the in-depth theory of investment and punishment. For this video, however, I'll give you a basic intro. In most games of Clash Royale, you'll automatically take up the role of investing or punishing your opponent. It basically depends on your win conditions elixir in comparison to your opponents. If you're a giant deck and your opponent is a hog deck, your role will be to invest in the back, whilst your opponents will be to punish whenever you invest. 
if you're that same giant deck against the golem, however, it will be your opponent's job to invest in the back, and your job to find a time to punish this. If you're the more expensive win con, you should invest. If you're the cheaper win con, you should punish. Make sense? Great. Now, how does that relate to placement? The only two placements you will need to know are investment placement and the punishment placement. To invest, you generally want to go behind your king tower, and for punishment, you want to go up the river. Wow, this is so complex, right? There are small nuances to this, like if you want to use your golem to defend something, then counterattack, it's this placement here, but generally you'll be using the two I just showed. With that being said, there are obviously exceptions to this rule. Miner always goes on the tower, but switch up which side you're on so you're not predictable every time. Goblin barrel onto the tower again. If your opponent is saving their spell, then you can try playing your barrel further back to try and trick your opponent into missing. Graveyard onto the tower too. There's never really a reason to play it anywhere else. The Placement on screen is one of the most optimal, but if you're scared of king tower activations, you can move it further from the king. Some win conditions even have different placements depending on whether your opponent is running buildings or not. Hog Rider has his own placement here, Battle Ram goes here, and Skeleton Barrel or Balloon go here. These placements will allow your win conditions to bypass more buildings than just playing them at the river, and are handy to know. Finally, we have Expo and Mortar placements right here. And yeah, that's all there really is to know for win conditions. Finally, I have a very small segment about spell usage. Here's a small clip from my how to use spell video, outlining the categories of spells. So we've spoken about big versus small spells already, but what about instant versus travel? Fun fact, the spells that are in glass containers are consistently instant spells, and the rest being ones that need to travel. So we have big and small spells, and then instant and travel spells. The key thing here is instant versus travel. Instant spells are relatively easy to grasp, you simply place it wherever your opponent's units are, and they'll do damage. But travel spells, well I guess there's a tiny little bit of placement we could explore. Prediction plays require timing as well as placement, and knowing that the further your spell has to travel, the quicker you have to predict. However, it also requires judgment of this so you don't go too early and miss. Against air units, you want to place closer to your tower than you think, due to the shadow actually being the troop's hitbox here. It's sort of a basic tip, but useful anyway. I guess most of that video as a whole was sort of basic, mainly because it's just discussing the general theory of troop placement. Anyway, with my guides about most common mistakes going out over the past couple of weeks, I thought it would be thematic to make a general guide to placements this week. Of course, this was all surface level content because there was a lot to pack into one video. But yeah, I hope this sort of makes more sense of a lot of units and how they should generally be used. But yeah boys, thank you all for watching this far into the video. If you haven't already, then be sure to drop a sub and whatnot. But apart from that, peace.